Hey everyone, Dollistic here, and today I'm doing a video that one of my commenters requested uh, about how to seal your dolls. So, uh, if you don't know the new generation of Monster High, some of them have paints applied on their limbs, like Frankie here has their prosthetic leg, their stitches. Let me get Laguna to show. Uh, Laguna has her ombre leg paint. And Twyla has her boogie smoke. And they don't really come sealed, so the paint will scratch off rather easily. And I hate that. <laughs> like, it's so sad to me that these dolls are basically, like, destroying themselves just by putting their clothes on. So I thought it would be a good idea to post sort of just a short informative video on how to do that. Like, what you'll need, how to do it. It's really super simple. You don't need anything complicated, and it doesn't take very long. It's just a few steps. Let's get right on in. This is my sister's signature, Frankie. She graciously allowed me to use them for this video uh, because she hasn't sealed their paint yet. I was smart and let her know ahead of time, like, <laughs> you need to be sealing all of your dolls because she is really in love with Frankie this generation. So she has a lot of these ghouls, and we're trying to be smart. We're trying to make them last. <laughs> so first off, I'm going to take all of their clothes off. So warning for doll nudity, because I'm not, I, I can't effectively cover them up or anything when I'm doing this process. So I'm going to take all their clothes off. I'll be right back. All right, so their clothes are off, and I will show you what you're going to need. I also wanted to point out that you can see on the leg here, on the stitch paint, that there's already been some rubbing. It has started to come off, uh, so it's good that we're doing this now. All right, I'm going to put them down, and I'm going to show you what you need. Let's angle down. So first, you're going to need a paintbrush. Uh, I typically use, like, this is a really old, <laughs> kind of crusty paintbrush. And I try to use an old one just in case I leave varnish or Mod Podge or glue or anything in them and they get messed up, I won't be too mad. <laughs> uh, I also keep some water around usually so I can wash the paintbrush off because you don't want to leave these things in the paintbrush. It will harden and they will be ruined. <laughs> and you're going to need some sort of sealant. Um, I've got four different options here. I've used each of these in various times. So we've got Liquitex High Gloss, Liquitex Matte, which is the one I'm going to be using today. There is Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Matte, and Mod Podge. Oh, does not want to focus. And Mod Podge. Now you can use any one of these four just depending on what sort of finish you want and how much work you're going to put into it. This one is definitely the most work because uh, if you've ever watched a video of a customizer or if you've ever used this yourself, you know how difficult it is. You have to wear a respirator mask. You have to do it outside. It takes about 30 minutes for each layer to cure. And it leaves it with not a coarse texture, but it definitely has, like, a grit. It's not smooth. But it's like that so that it can be drawn on, it can be handled, you know? So I'm going to put that out of the way. Um, Mod Podge is pretty good. I just, I tend to use it for much, much bigger projects. <laughs> like, if I'm painting, I usually cover my paintings in this. And then, of course, you've got the glat. No. <laughs> And you've got the gloss and matte varnish. This is purely, like, what you want the leg to look like. Like, if you want the leg to be super shiny so it actually looks metallic, you could use gloss. But I prefer matte. My sister prefers matte. So, and I bought this bottle forever ago, so that is probably not the price anymore. But uh, these last forever. Like, in doll scale, this stuff lasts forever. So, let's get right into it. Focus. I truly just use whatever's in the cap because it doesn't take much at this scale. And what you're going to do, you're going to take some varnish. Oh, that is too much. You do not need that much. And I'll start with the leg because this is the part that, like, you really want to keep. It's the part that's not covered up. And yeah. Wow, this is difficult to do behind a camera. Okay. And yeah, you just paint it on. And you're going to cover the entire painted part of the leg with it. Wow, this is way more difficult than the customizers make it look on camera. And you can do, like, 
thin is not the word. Like, you want to use enough varnish, obviously, to cover what you're painting. But it's not necessary to make it thick. If it's thick, it's going to look clumpy. So just don't do that. I also recommend using a relatively soft brush. Like, don't use anything that's super hard, because then you're going to leave really obvious brush strokes. And you don't want it to look rough, you know? Alright, so there's the leg. You can kind of see where it is. It will dry matte. Don't worry, it's just wet right now. And let's cover up these stitches. And these are far more simple, because you kind of just just brush over right where the stitches are. If you're really concerned, you can cover more of the leg, but honestly, there's not really a need. Like, this little area will be fine. And for the most part, it's not really noticeable. Like, once it dries, you will barely be able to tell that you did it, but it'll make all the difference because it will last long term. You don't have to worry about it scratching as you put their clothes on. All right, and you will go through all of these other stitches. Uh, as a reminder, there's one here, here, on both of their forearms and on their neck. Um, you don't really have to do the face. I mean, you can if you want to, but I, I never do because I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not actively messing with the faces usually. So there's not really that much threat of the paint coming off, so it should be fine. I am going to get all of these covered, and I will be right back. For this next stitch, I wanted to just give like a little tip. Uh, what I usually do is I tilt the head so that you can see the entirety of the stitch, and I turn the doll upside down so that the hair isn't in the way when I'm covering it. Because, yeah. That's way easier, because I was having, <laughs> obviously I was having issues with their hair getting stuck in the wet varnish. And, like, that is not what you want. <laughs> and yeah, just cover the whole thing. And like I said, make sure you're not leaving any clumps anywhere, because that won't look good. <laughs> Alright, so I have covered all of their stitches. Let me turn them right side up again. Or at least like this. So I've covered all of their stitches, and I am going to let them dry. You want to let each layer dry for, like, five-ish minutes, just so that when you go to put on the next coat, uh, it doesn't rip it off. Because <laughs> if you don't give it enough time to dry in between, it can come off as you're painting a new layer. So I'm going to give it about five minutes to dry, and yeah, I'll come back and do a second layer. And I also typically clean off the paintbrush in between applications, just so that, again, I don't have to worry about it getting messed up. But that is why I use an old brush, because I am very forgetful. <laughs> so sometimes it happens, I've definitely lost quite a few brushes that way. That's why I always use old ones. <laughs> Alright, so it has been five minutes. They should be completely dry. Let me test. Yep. Alright, everything is dry. So I'm going to put on a second coat now. I guess you don't really have to. I do it just to be careful. And, you know, I want that little bit of extra protection. So let's, let's put on a second coat. It's funny, I always seem to start with the leg. Like, every Frankie I have, I always seem to start with the leg. I don't know, it's the coolest thing about them. Like, it's the one thing that I'm sure that I probably could not recreate. Like, you know, I've obviously dabbled in customizing. If you've looked at my Instagram, like, my name is Dollist at Customs. Like, I've dabbled in customizing. And I know this is probably the thing I couldn't recreate. I could probably do the stitches over again. But, like, all these fun little symbols, I I don't have the patience. So it probably would not happen. <laughs> not in, like, a good way. <laughs> Alright, so I definitely put too much on my brush this time. 
uh, but that's fine. You can just feather out the edges so that it doesn't look chunky. The main thing, especially on the stitches that are showing, is you don't want the varnish to dry chunky. So don't use, like, too much. Use enough to cover it, obviously. Use enough to cover it well. But don't use so much that it'll dry gross. Alright, I am going to finish up the rest of their stitches. I'm going to let them dry. And I will see you in another five minutes. So we are back. It has been five minutes. And as you can see, there is almost no difference. Like, you can... You can tell a little bit more on the stitch. Like, if you turn it towards the light, you can kind of see that there's something there. But the varnish dries matte, and it looks really great. It doesn't even look like you did anything, but you did. And your doll will thank you for it, because it will last much longer. Especially the stitch at the neck right here, if you're moving around the head a lot. And the ones, like, on the... Th the one on the thigh and forearms, especially, because Frankie of course, has, like, a skirt that has to go over their thigh and these sleeves that will catch. So, it's going to be much better for your doll. And it only took 10-15 minutes for us to do this from start to finish, and it'll help the longevity of your doll for a long time. And yeah, it really is just that easy. It's just, like, two steps. You paint it on, you wait for it to dry. You paint another layer on, you wait for it to dry redress them your doll is ready to go back on the shelf all right and that is pretty much it i mean that's the whole process so we're done uh, all that's left to do is get them redressed and put them back on the shelf so uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching um i hope this was informative and i just want to make it clear like the either of these varnishes or this mod podge you don't need this brand you can just get any brand of varnish like i think there's a store brand you could get that probably works fine like, work with what you have. I wouldn't... Uh, I've seen pe I've even seen people use, like, white school glue. I wouldn't recommend that because I think that yellows over time. And I don't think it offers very much in the way of uh, protection. But, I mean, you could try it for yourself if you wanted. But you can get any of this stuff at pretty much any store. Like, if you're near a craft store, they're obviously going to have it. Or if you are near, like, a Walmart or a Target, they typically have it. If they have, like, a craft section, like, Target should always have it. And they last, like, forever. I think this is still, like, the original bottle of varnish I bought five years ago. Maybe six at this point. And I'm near the bottom. Like, there's about that much left. But, like, it... That's how long this has lasted me. <laughs> so they last forever. It's worth the money you're going to put into it. And it's worth it to keep your dolls protected over time. And you can use this on any doll that has a painted part. Whether it be Monster High, Rainbow High, LOL, OMG, like whatever. Whatever you want to use it on, it will help protect. Alright everyone, well thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things because it helps me out. Um, or don't, because, you know, I'm not going to force you to. <laughs> but, again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!